Today is Monday, October 3rd, and we start our day with breakfast and coffee at the hotel. Our first event is a one-hour lecture at the hotel. It is presented by Emily Voss, and the lecture is called Madison, Montpelier, and the Constitution. Emily spoke of how James Madison was revered as the father of the Constitution and co-author of the Federalist Papers. Emily also spoke of James Madison's wife, Dolly. For half a century, she was one of the most important women in the social circles of America. In fact, First Lady Dolly Madison and Paul Jennings are credited with saving the portrait of George Washington when the British attacked the Capitol in 1814. Our road Scholar bus picks us up at our hotel, and we begin our one and a half hour ride to Montpelier. Along the way, we're going to slow down because there's no place to stop, and we'll see Montebello, the birthplace of President Zachary Taylor. We are now arriving at Montpelier, the home of James and Dolly Madison. William DuPont was the last private owner of Montpelier. William and his wife Annie made substantial changes to the house, enlarging it, renovating the formal garden, and adding many outbuildings and stables. Their daughter Marion DuPont Scott was an accomplished horsewoman who transformed Montpelier into a first-class thoroughbred breeding and racing facility, building a state-of-the-art steeplechase course and a flat training track. In 1929, Marion started the Montpelier races and opened them to the public. Marion's legacy continues with the running of the Montpelier races a premium event on the National Steeplechase Association circuit, and it's always held on the first Saturday in November. We arrive at the Rubenstein Visitor Center, where we see a life-size sculpture of James and Dolly Madison. It's time to start our guided tour. Marion DuPont Scott died in 1983 and bequeathed the property to the National Trust for Historic Preservation. It took five years and $24 million to restore the stately home to the way it appeared during James Madison's retirement years. This was there. And they built the portico at that time. So the house wasn't connected down the street. They would come out of their walk down the portico. Madison is very concerned with the ideas of religious freedom. In the context of that Virginia uh, Declaration of Rights, he insists on the language of religious freedom rather than tolerance, which was the language that was Mason had learned. So it builds up a static electric charge and goes down the tube and electrifies the ball again. Now, Dolly liked to use this as a parlor game, you know, later in the himself for hours and hours in 1785-1786. He was serving the Virginia legislature some at that time. And he wasn't in session with them. He was back here negotiating their own trade deals with foreign powers, printing their own currencies. The Garden Temple is constructed over an underground ice house. For lunch today, 
we had box lunches from the Exchange Cafe at Montpelier. Near the entrance to Montpelier is the now decommissioned train depot that was built by William DuPont to enable his travel to Delaware for work and to provide passenger and freight service to Montpelier. The depot has been restored to its 1910 original appearance. We're heading back to the hotel where we all have the afternoon free to do whatever we'd like. Since Pat and I have a rental car, we're going to drive up to Carter Mountain Orchard and explore that. Carter Mountain is a gift shop, a bakery, an ice cream parlor, a farm stand. There's just something for everyone. We're going to have the apple cider donuts, some hot cider, and some hard cider. I'm not kidding, these are the best donuts in the whole entire world. In September 2019, I was in Charlottesville to attend a family wedding with my daughter Sarah and her family. We came to Carter Mountain then to have dinner, listen to music, and watch the sunset. I was so amazed at how many people came to watch the sunset from here. <laughs> 